Hey, it's Bob from Tuto Dopio. Today it's, uh, what, it's like the first week, second week of July, and we haven't had any rain for maybe six weeks. Mm-hmm. Let's see what the temperature is. 30.6, that's like 31 degrees Celsius, which by my calculations is about 400 degrees Fahrenheit. So this is a perfect time to move the wine from the barrel into the tank in preparation for putting it into the bottle. Let's go, come on. I'm gonna show you my winery. Come on. Come this way. Come this way. Come this way. Okay, this is my winery. Oh, well, don't pay any attention to the spare bedroom or the, or the washing machine stuff there. That's, that's extra. Or the bookshelves or the extra clothes storage or the bicycles. Don't worry about that. And then, like, all this stuff over here, you don't have to worry about that. We'll exclude that from the winery. And then there's, like, my little work space area and then my desk. This is my office. I started off actually in the house like a normal person upstairs. And then slowly I've been migrated down and pushed off into this corner. But the rest of the area, the rest of the basement is my winery. So let me show it to you. It's right here. That's, that's the winery. Okay, so what we're going to do is we've got some red wine. This is this year's, or last year's, sorry, 2016 Montepulciano de Bruzzo. That's red. It's been in there for maybe 10 months. It's time to take it out. We use this barrel about three times. We're going to get the wine out of here. Put it in this steel tank right here, let it settle. Then we'll bottle it in another month or so. And then we're gonna dump this barrel, turn it into a table. Uh, when we rack the wine out of the barrel, or basically when we rack the wine at any point, you usually check the sulfur level. I haven't done that. So I'm gonna guess that this needs about a gram of sulfur. So this is a quarter teaspoon right here. I, my estimate is that's a little shy of a gram and a half, and I think we need about a gram, so I'm going to go, I'm going to add about that much, and then we'll check it before we bottle it. All right, just going to put that in there. Okay, let's get started. Got the bung out of the barrel. I'm going to put this thing in. I've cleaned all the hoses in advance. I'm going to stick this guy in here. We need to be a little careful because this hose will actually displace the wine as we put it in, and we don't want that to spill. But we also want it to stay submerged, otherwise we'll get an air bubble and the pump won't work. All right, this is the fun part. Usually you have to prime these things. There we go. It's gonna be a little noisy. Take a look. Beautiful, isn't it? All right, so we got a little leak here. Not sure, I forgot to do our little trick here. So one way, since we have no access to this fantastic cantina except walking down the stairs past the bedroom and the bathroom and everything else. Uh, we try to keep all this as clean as possible and not have any spills. We can't spray anything down here. So that's what we've learned is that we usually grab one of these uh, grape buckets. That's what we put the clusters in when we do our harvest and just put the whole darn thing in here. And that way if there's much of a spill, it's pretty easy to clean up. We just take this case back up with us onto the driveway and clean it all up. Okay, so we've pumped out as much as we dare. 
there's still some stuff in there, but it's kind of sludgy. So we're just gonna we're just gonna forget that part. Let it sit. There, I'm sure we've got some um, lees, which is sort of the sludge, the dead uh, yeast, etc. Still in here, so it needs to it needs to settle, and then we'll be ready to bottle it. We weren't completely spotless, but we were pretty darn close. Here's the here's what we missed when I pulled the tube out of the barrel. We got a couple of little spots here, but this will clean up okay. Without too much trouble. And, uh, hey, come take a look at the... Nice and dark, huh? Looks pretty good. Alright, the next thing we're going to do... This can't be exposed to air. That's long enough. It'll turn to vinegar. So we're going to use this floating lid. This is just a normal kind of lid, but it's got this lip on it and what's basically like the inner tube of a bicycle. I cleaned it up, I put it on here. And now all you do is drop this thing in. It will float on top of the wine. And then we just pump the inner tube part up. And that will create a seal, which is certainly good enough for the next couple, next month or two before we bottle her up. And that's it. That's it. We're on the home stretch for our 2016 red wine. Look, I know I sounded kind of whiny. <laughs> whiny. That's because I was kind of whiny about the size of my cantina, my winemaking operation. Size doesn't really count all that much. I mean, you need a little bit of space, and I should be thankful because I got plenty of space to make lots of wine. We're going to have 130 or so bottles of red wine. This year we're going to make I don't know, a couple hundred bottles of white and a couple hundred bottles of rosé. So that's that's like a lot. And um, and this is a great space. It's completely underground. The temperature only changes by a couple of degrees at the most. Great place to make wine. Great place to store wine. So I'm uh, I'm quite thankful. Let's give this. So let's let's try a little taste of this wine. It's way too early. This is a red wine that can be bottled and shelled for easily eight years. Um, so it's got a long way to go before it's ready, but let's just have a, let's just take a little taste and see what we got. Here. It's nice and purple. It's a beautiful color, really, really dark. Last year was a really high sugar content, so the alcohol is pretty high in this. We won't dilute it, but um, we will drink it slowly. It's good. It's still young, but it's not as acidic as I thought it was going to be. Hmm. Salute. When it comes to making wine, cleanliness is next to godliness, except for my outfit.